On the 24th day of April in the year 1915, the Turkish governors, acting on orders from the Ministry of the Interior, commenced a barbaric genocide against the Armenian race, an event which has since been recorded as one of the darkest days in modern history. In the Holocaust that followed, a million and a half Armenians were massacred. Genocide. What does it mean? What does it mean to you? What does it mean to the future of humanity? Definitively, genocide means the use or user of a systematic plan for the complete extermination of political, religious, or cultural groups. Let us reflect a moment on the magnitude of this definition. Total extermination. It is almost impossible to comprehend the full meaning of these words. Countless volumes penned by the great historians and statesmen of modern times attest to the thoroughness of the military and civil populace alike in the performance of these heinous deeds. We commemorate this day to honor our martyred dead with this special requiem service and to remind ourselves and the world that genocide must never again be permitted to happen by this nation or any nation whatever. Amen. first Christian nation was first subjected to grand-scale massacre in 1895 and again in 1896, when 300,000 Armenians were senselessly murdered by the Turks. History records earlier outrages against the Armenians by the Turk, but the trend toward genocide had its inception toward the end of the 19th century. Any conjecture relative to Turkey's intent was removed when the first meeting of the Itihad Turkish party met on August 10th in the year 1910. It was here that the new group, known to English-speaking people as the Committee for Union and Progress Party, formulated plans for modern-day massacres which were later to be labeled genocide. Once taken, their actions would eradicate all minority groups from Turkish lands and establish Turkish supremacy over non-Turks. At Salonika, 14 months later, a second meeting was called by the new party where plans were finalized. The Armenians were singled out for total annihilation. The Turks awaited only the opportune moment for putting their monstrous plan into effect. 
Talat Pasha was the most influential leader of Turkey's Union and Progress Party. As Grand Vizier, his orders started the massacres. He told Ambassador Morgenthau, in three months, I have accomplished more toward solving the Armenian problem than Abdul Hamid accomplished in 30 years. Enver Pasha, Turkey's war minister, agreed that Armenians could appeal serious crimes to the Sultan. We hang them first and send the petitions for pardon afterward. Jemal Pasha headed the Turkish police. It was his job to round up all those opposing the then governing party. Critical examination of their collective deeds would drastically alter the false hero image Turkish school texts repeatedly attempted to impart to school-age Turks. This seemingly dignified group of militarists did in fact meet clandestinely. Their objective, extermination of the Armenians. He who kills even one Christian unbeliever shall be rewarded by God. Christians are the enemies of God and our faith. Taken from a 10-page appeal for Muslims to engage in a religious war with Christians. On September 15, 1915, Talat Pasha issued the following coded cable. In our preceding communication, the government has decided to exterminate all Armenians in Turkey. There should be no regards for women, children, or the infirm. Those opposing this order cannot be a part of this government. Believing they were meeting with this Turkish governor to discuss reforms for their people, these Armenian patriot leaders were murdered just one hour later. Once begun, the horrors of massacre quickly spread, leaving in its wake countless dead, piled side by side in town after town. Here lie unidentified corpses in a cemetery next to a churchyard. There were others, like these, whose mutilated bodies filled half-dug trenches everywhere, without a modicum of dignity attending their final hours. Turkish leaders continued their deceit, trying to make others believe it was the Kurds who were responsible. Whereas the Nazis confined their murderous genocide to concentration camps, the Turks rained their death blows in the streets, in fields, in churches, and in the cemeteries. This bridge was a favorite of the Turks, who tied their victims in groups of eight or ten and forced them to jump into the waters below. Hysterical mothers threw their children to their deaths rather than have them converted to Mohammedanism. Rare indeed were the fortunate dead over whom a priest would offer requiem mass. As part of the Armenian intelligentsia, clergymen were early rounded up and put to the torch. As the Armenian death toll grew, Bewildered children who understood their plight prayed for the serenity of death. Defiled by disease and with hunger gnawing at their stomachs, children wandered the streets and fields, living on roots and beetles. A million and a half Armenians had perished. Another half million were near death. The American Near East Relief Committee evacuated thousands of orphans to Greece and Syria. Women who could carried their young to these points. Others simply fell by the wayside, unable to go on. Children waited in the snow, hoping for admission into Orphan City. Youngsters everywhere knew that unless they were admitted into an orphanage, death by starvation or murder was certain. Train stations told the grim story as ragged waifs watched longingly, hoping they too would be asked to board the trains of life. Some children waited, others searched for food, eating candle wax or weeds, and this in a country whose bountiful harvests were a known fact. If not in former days, these boys certainly had become brothers as survivors of the indescribable massacres. Scenes like this one at Yerevan were commonplace, yet represented only part of a day's rescue of lost children throughout Turkey. Armenian orphans of Alexandropol shared the same fate as their counterparts in all parts of the blood-stained lands. The growing number of orphans, all with similar needs, presented tremendous problems in housing and feeding. But for the unrelenting efforts of the American Near East Relief Committee, the monumental task of rehabilitating homeless Armenians 
might never have been possible, volunteers worked tirelessly to mend brutally twisted and broken bodies of the mistreated children. The happy children never forgot to offer prayers of thanks for the smallest crust of bread. As the infinitely sad strains of the Armenian Requiem Mass came to an end, heavy-hearted Armenians slowly left their beloved church and formed a great motorcade which was to lead them to Kobo Hall. Simultaneously, torrential rains poured forth relentlessly, covering the entire route of travel. It was as though God himself had joined the mourning throng. While the huge crowd sat in somber silence, Detroit's Mayor Jerome P. Cavanaugh spoke. The other day, a distinguished group of your leaders, whom I was privileged to receive in my office when I formally signed a proclamation proclaiming this day, Armenian Martyrs Day in our city, Detroit, that I would make every attempt to stop in and uh, pay my respects to this uh, most important cause which you're celebrating today and the most important task which you're undertaking, which your previous speaker so eloquently laid before you. I know uh, as an American citizen, I was deeply moved by what your previous speaker had to say, because I think you and your people stand as the best witness to the need for freedom in this country and throughout the world uh, of any peoples of, that I can think of. And let me say this too, that you don't stand alone because the reason for my proclaiming this day was not just ceremonial. It was to attempt to dramatize this deep condition of the heart, which I know uh, each of you is possessed, and that is uh, that justice will prevail and that you and your peoples shall realize the freedom that all of us here in America enjoy. And that's why it was my privilege to proclaim this day and ask that all of our citizens in this city, not just those of Armenian descent, but all Americans, to stand with you in proclaiming not only this day, Armenian Martyrs Day, but to call attention to this continuing struggle which you and your people are engaged in. That someday soon, in the foreseeable future, uh, certainly, hopefully, in our lifetime, if not in our children's lifetime, that all men and all women in this country and throughout the world can enjoy the freedom and live with the peace and the dignity that every human being is entitled to. What does genocide mean to the future of humanity? It means that unless definite steps are taken toward the prevention of genocide ever happening again, new Attila's, New Genghis Khans, new Abdul Hamids, new Adolf Hitlers will again rise to bathe the world in new massacres of blood and terror.